Welcome to part three of our interview, our final piece of our interview with Kirsten Watson of Canaxis. In this uh, final episode, you're going to hear about the importance of patience, of writing for humans rather than search engines, of, you know, just of writing great quality blogs and thought leadership. So I really hope you enjoy this session. I think it's this is a great interview and, and a really interesting company. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, so I, one, one thing I want to touch on, and, and I think you made a very valid point of patience, that writing a blog is not something you do overnight. You don't get readers overnight. It comes from consistently consistency, maintaining standards, maintaining quality standards, um, publishing regularly, um, engaging with other people. What are your thoughts on, on the need for consistency? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't think it has to be an everyday thing. Um, at least that's not been our experience. If we could post daily, we would love to. But I, I think the big thing is a couple a week minimum, so people don't think you've fallen off the radar. Um, but I also think it's important to focus on the quality of what you're writing about. So we take the same approach with our newsletters and any email campaigns that we send out as well, is that if we don't have something worthy of saying and sharing, don't. And, and I think some blogs do focus more on the consistency of, well, i got to get something out today, um, you know, and they'll craft something hastily together and get it posted. And I think that's the wrong approach. I think you're better off to go silent for a day or two um, and put out something that is quality and is engaging that the readers are going to enjoy and therefore continue to come back and consume. Mm, I, yeah, you're right. And even things like you know, writing and rewriting a blog post and finding good images and, and just the layout of the blog article makes a big difference too. That's a great point, and I agree. And that was, again, that was something that we learned over time as well was wherever possible bring in images where we can or link to related content. And the beauty there is often the people that develop that content will find an opportunity to link maybe back to you, right, as a reciprocal um, act and, and all that stuff builds value in one your exposure, but you know your SEO and so forth. It all ties together. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to ask you about is you're very focused on search engine optimization, and that's great. But that, that's always been historically using keywords and getting links. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's been, and it's always been, you know, don't do video because you know SEO doesn't work well with video. Although YouTube is a pretty popular uh, site and uh, has a lot of SEO juice, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts about you know the traditional SEO approach versus what your experience has been? Yeah, so we we work with a really great company, um, our search strategy company is Inquiro Solutions, and they off the very first day we had our conversation kickoff call um, had iterated to us how important it was to be building your structure, your site, your content, uh, your images around the human user. You can't lose sight of that. One, because what's the point in be able to draw traffic if you're just going to turn them off in the end anyway? Sure. Your efforts are worthless. Um, but number two, Google's smarter than any of us, right? They're they're putting changes to their algorithms in all the time. That sniffs out, you know, the cheaters. So um, it's important to always do what's best for the audience we're trying to attract. And if we do a good job at our SEO and, and bring them in and then deliver on the promise is a term that we always use here. If someone searches on X keyword, you know, they better, when they find and land on our site, be getting information on that keyword that they typed in as opposed to us, you know, overusing keywords in a specific area where we shouldn't. And so, you know, the quality thing is, is, is very important on the SEO front. But um, where video and the rest of it is concerned, I mean, some of it is more and more um, getting grabbed by the search engines. But I think if you do a smart job with your tagging and your linking and, you know, linking content to other content, um, it all in the end comes together and, 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 and brings value from the SEO front as well. Mm, yeah, it does. Let's, uh, as we wind down here, what I'd like to talk to talk about is you've been doing all of these, the blogs and the marketing automation and search engine optimization, and how long have you been doing it and what has resulted from it? Uh, well, it depends on which piece you talk about. So we've been, um, as I say, the blog's been out since I think 04. 
Um, maybe it was 03. I'd have to go back and look. Um, the community is about a year old, year and a bit old, and we've reiterated it several times as we learn and go and change and update. Um, the video work has been over the last two years. SEO has been over the last three. So it, it kind of depends. And what's interesting is the vision that we have now for that basket of things that we do um, is very uh, cohesive, or we view it all as very cohesive, very interrelated. We work to integrate all of that stuff and make sure it's all, you know, being delivered in the most efficient and effective way as possible. But if I turn back time, you know, that vision that we have now, in hindsight, wasn't really where we started out. It was kind of, you know, stepping pieces and, you know, light bulbs going off over time. Well, wow, we can add that on, and that'll add value here, here, and here. Um, I do think that we were in a very good position, um, both, you know, with support from our executive team and having budget made available to us to take some risks on the social front. Um, that whole social campaign or social program started with our CEO kind of coming by, I guess, two years back now and saying, what's with all the social media stuff and shouldn't we be doing more of it? And, you know, I remember thinking, is he talking about Facebook? I just don't see a fit for us on Facebook, but let's look into it. And so we rolled up our sleeves and started to do our research and started to try and understand it. And then, you know, very quickly we started to think uh, B2B, because we always believed it was more of a B2C play, um, there is an opportunity for B2B uh, with social, if done right, you know, on the right platforms and reaching the right people. And so our, our next step was really grab Forrester and get, get the research done first before we, we forayed into it. But we've continued, and we still do continue to take some risks to see, you know, does this work, doesn't it work? And if we stub our toe, we sit back and reflect and try something different. And that's uh, that's really been what's what's gotten us um, um, this far, you know? I think that's a, a very interesting point. Try it. If it doesn't work, stop doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's by experimenting, you discover new things all the time. That's uh, exactly right. So this has been a great interview, Kristen. Um, is there anything else you want to add um, as we wrap up here that you think people should know about your approach to marketing, lessons learned, approaches, et cetera? Yeah, I think it's it's just around the, the don't, uh, hesitate to try new things and, and certainly, um, you know, spend some time getting to understand um, if, you know, this is about social, you know, really look hard at what some of the best practices are that are, are being developed. And I say being developed because it's new to most of us. You know, I don't think the book's been written on what's right and what's wrong. I think we've got some great gu guidelines and certainly a, a great reference I would recommend is the Groundswell book by Forrester, which really helped us kind of get the that initial um, lay of the land as to what we were getting into before we did it. I think it sort of sets the stage really, really beautifully for people. Um, but yeah, take some risks and try some things and you know, work hard at getting executive support because without that, I, I, I think what we've managed to do uh, would have been a whole lot harder and I don't think we'd be as far as we would be if our superiors thought we were just, you know, playing around on Facebook and LinkedIn all day, right? Which I think is sometimes the view that executives have. They don't really understand um, what might come of it if they just let their people kind of spread their wings a little bit and, and get some soak time going with some of these platforms and, and see, you know, find out where their, their audience is and start to engage and see what you can make of it. That's, I think you're right, of dipping your toe in the water and uh, trying things and obviously looking for great ideas out there with books like Groundswell and some of the other great uh, books out there. Yep. Kristen, this has been a great uh, interview. I've really enjoyed speaking with you. Oh, me too. It was my pleasure. This concludes our interview with Kirsten Watson, the Director of Corporate Marketing for Canaxis. We hope you found a lot of great value in this, and we invite you to visit Find New Customers to learn more about us and visit Canaxis to learn more about them. Have a great day, and stay tuned to Find New Customers and Fearless Competitor for more great B2B marketing tips.